Okay, hello everybody. Today is Tech Tips Tuesday again. First, I want to apologize for the long delay. I had a vacation and then got sick, and so I've basically got nothing done this week, and so I'm back at another Tech Tips Tuesday. I'm back in a rush trying to throw something together quickly, so I will be going to do that. Another thing I had quite a few people mention to me was that uh, I was misplacing where I stole the Tech Tip Tuesday idea from. I had said it was from EEV blog, but he does tear down Tuesday. Instead, I've stolen it from Mr. Carlson's lab. I highly recommend that you check out both of those channels. They are very cool. A lot of uh, heavy nerd level stuff that I like anyway. Maybe you'll like it as well if you're liking my channel. So uh, I'll give you some links here for those if you want to check them out. Um, so the topic for today I thought that would be helpful is what kind of amp is right for me. I see this a lot on Reddit, I've seen it on book posts, I think I've even seen it on some forums. A lot of guitar players might have started out with just some really cheap practice amp and they realize, you know, I've done this for a while now, I really like it, I want to take a step up to something worthwhile. So, uh, the first thing I really could kind of break it down is the four simple things you should do before you start even asking other people about this to help narrow down the search, because otherwise it's just way too big of a question. Um, there are so many styles of music, so many types of guitar players, so many sounds you can make from different kind of amps, and so many different kind of amps. So. You need to kind of narrow down a lot of those choices so that it's easier for people to give you some suggestions. There's a lot of people out there that have their preferences. They don't know everything about every type. I'm, I'm not the guy that knows everything about all amps. I know I know Fender's pretty well, Vox is pretty well because I love those, but even master those. And then stuff like Marshall's I only kind of generically know I'm not great at. So you have to find the area you want to ask the question so that someone can see that that knows that area and can then chime in and say, oh yeah, this is what you want. Um, so. Uh, to get to that, we're going to break it down by a few other factors that they'll need to know before they can kind of come in and help out. So first one I recommend is the most important is the cost. How much can you spend on an amp? I would also highly recommend, usually if you've got a practice amp that's working and it's just not uh, quite there, save your money as long as you can, as long as possible, because you don't tend to buy a lot of amps in your time playing. I've been playing guitar for 20 some odd years. And I had a practice amp that sucked, and after a while I was able to finally afford to scrape up about six or 700 bucks and get a tube amp, and I had that amp for another 10 or so years before I got another amp. So make sure that you're making that right choice, that first upgrade. And if you can save just a little bit more, wait another four, six months, whatever, just put, put aside every penny you can, that will pay back in big time in the long run. But that being said, you do need to get that set, figure out, hey, this is my limit, I can't go over 400 or 500 or 300 or whatever it is. And then you, that's one of the important factors you tell those people you're asking for help. Uh, the second thing is, what type of amp are you looking for? Really, that break, there's tons of little categories inside that, but the four most important ones really would be either solid state, hybrid, modeling, or tube. Uh, now, a solid state amp is designed with all uh, solid state components, and they can generally be very small and lightweight, and they... Um, they will be very clean. Their job is to reproduce the sound perfectly as it's coming in. Those are really good for people that want to use uh, something similar to what's called a pedal platform. There's also certain types of music like jazz where that works really well for. Um, you just need to decide, you know, is that this is what you want? Is pure clean reproduction of your guitar so that you can throw pedals and other kinds of effects in to mix that up and make the sound yourself by shaping it with those kind of pedals. The second type is a hybrid. Uh, a hybrid is one that's kind of a halfway between a tube amp and a solid amp because they'll have one or a few tubes in it. Its job is adding a little bit of tube character, but most of it is still solid state. Another type that kind of fits between as well is called modeling amps. Modeling amps have a built-in kind of computer chip in them that knows how to listen to an amp and then memorize the way it works tonally and reproduce it. Um, so. Modeling amps are fairly expensive at the higher end, and I, I think they now we're kind of niche thing. They become a lot more mainstream. There are some lesser expensive ones, but they tend to not quite be as good a quality as those more expensive ones. But um, they are there, and, and they're I think they're useful, especially for touring musicians if they can afford to kind of throw that on a stage instead of a tube amp that's maybe really old and really valuable but might break down. Hello, Max. Max is coming to say hi. Uh, and then the final one, of course, ones that I love the most are the tube amps. Uh, and tube amplifiers tend to be a bit more expensive, mostly because they have very large power transformers. The transformers that you need for solid state you need to only have about, I don't know, maybe at most 40 volts. And most of the time it's only 10 or 15 volts. Whereas tubes need hundreds, 400 times. Uh, they also need an output transformer, which you don't need on a solid state amplifier. And the output transformer also costs a lot and is usually very big and heavy depending on how much output wattage you're getting. That On top of that, you have the glass tubes that have an additional cost to them and needing to maintain those by replacing them periodically. All of that adds up to overall higher cost for tube amps. But it is worth it, in my opinion, for the tone that you get out of it. So that's just my personal preference. So some people will say, you know, ah, tubes don't do it for me, and that's perfectly fine. 
Um, and there are some boutique solid state companies out there. But like, you know, from what I understand, the, the kind of pretty much the standard solid state that's considered one of the best that's not boutique is the Roland JC120. I think Roland also makes a, a smaller one like a JC40. Um, but effectively, there are other herbs out there that do solid state that work just fine. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think Boss Katana gets really rave reviews. There's several others that are very popular. But ultimately, any person that's big into solid state amps can talk for days about them better than I can. Uh, and that's kind of part of the point I'm saying is you need to decide if one of those categories seems to fit what you're looking for. And one of the ways to find that is part three is what are your influences musically? What, what do you want to kind of sound like? Who do you want to sound like? Is there a particular guitar player or a particular band or a particular style of music that fits what you're doing or want to do? Uh, and, and if so, you can even solve some of those questions yourself by looking at what they're playing and just going and, and seeing if those fit your sound. Um, uh, but ultimately, at least knowing what your influences are will really impact what type of band fit for you. Uh, the next and most important one, honestly, though, is to go and try some out. Uh, after you've gone through those, try some out. Get a sense for what they feel like. The bad part is, is that trying them out isn't the best way because you can't usually play very high volume in most music stores. I'm not a big fan of people blaring their guitar amp at, at max volume. But at least it gets you a chance to play with them a little, see how it impacts the tone of the guitar, uh, and turn it at a lower volume and get a sense of at least ballpark of if it really sounds horrible to you or not. Um, but even then, that can be a bit misleading, so you know, be careful about that. But that's at least a good starting. But you get all those pieces together, you might be able to narrow it down yourself to maybe five different amps you're looking at that are in your price range, and you could go and ask questions and hopefully get some answers about that. So I hope this kind of information is helpful. I hope that will give some people the right starting points to come and ask for help about it instead of well, quite often that's the first questions we ask anyway when people are asking about what amps they should get. So think about those things. Uh, hopefully they'll help people trying to figure out what kind of... Uh, tech they need for their guitar playing needs on the amplifier market uh, and please do uh, if you like content give it a like give it a thumbs up tell me if there's other kinds of areas I should talk about as well on the channel I would love to expand in other areas that, that make sense to those of you that are interested in what I've been blabbering on about so thanks everybody uh, talk to you next time